Hey guys, NCS Fan 001 here, and I am so freaking happy and excited because I'm finally getting back to recording full on Let's Plays. Let's Play number 31, and only my second really serious uh, non blind survival horror Let's Play Resident Evil HD Remastered Edition for the PS4. Man, that's a mouthful. So guys, let's get to it. Resident Evil 1. Okay, so I'm only going to be recording the first three uh, videos, or the first three videos in the session, just because I don't know if there's going to be, like, copywriting from the cutscenes and stuff, but I don't think there will be. Uh, so we have stuff here. It's all the way I want it. Uh... Uh, we're gonna choose this. This is our medium difficulty. And we're gonna be playing as Jill. Uh, Jill is slightly easier to play as in a few ways, but also weaker in a few ways. So we're gonna be playing as Jill on medium. Because hard and very hard don't unlock until you completed the game on medium, I believe. No way, I think you just have to complete the game. So. Let's roll. I'll shut up for the initial cutscene. The team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we are searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, the Bravo team, who disappeared during the middle of their mission. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently... The Bravo team was sent in to investigate, but we lost contact. Look, Chris! Bravo team's helicopter was a derelict. Save for the remaining body of Kevin. We continued our search for the other members, and it turned into a nightmare. Let's think about a couple of things here. You guys may remember back in my uh, Silent Hill Let's Play, Silent Hill 1, uh, I was discussing the horrible logic of the game. There, I could see multiple things. Jill just stands there holding an empty pistol. 
and doesn't run away, even when she's watching dogs maul and eat her there friend. Are three stars members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. Wrong. What is this place? Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Hey, Whisker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. But we've got to find... What was that? Chris? No. Jill, go and investigate. I'm going with her. Chris and I go back a long way. All right. You two go. I'll secure this area. Stay sharp. Okay, so this game, unlike uh, Silent Hill 1, or even Resident Evil 4, oh, another cutscene. A dining room. All right, so, like I was saying, unlike with Silent Hill 1 even, and Resident Evil 4 definitely, uh, this game has far less focus on actually fighting enemies and a lot more focus on solving puzzles and exploration. Okay, so right here we're going to get an ink ribbon. This is one of the ways in which this could be, uh, this game is very much old generation survival horror. You have a very limited number, well, no, not really a very limited, but you do have a limited number of saves. You can only save as many times as you have an ink ribbon. Uh, typewriters are where you save at, but we're not going to be doing that anytime soon. I think you'd better take a look at this. What is it? One. Jill, let's see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Let's just hope it's not Chris's. Uh, can we pick this up yet? Yes, we can. Uh, will you take the emblem? Yes. Uh, you're going to be finding all sorts of items that you will think are useless at times or just don't really have a purpose at any given time. Virtually every item in this game is going to be used for something, so don't be fooled by that. Uh, that's pause button. Triangle will bring up our inventory. So as you can see, we have a handgun, a survival knife, a emblem, and our ink ribbons. Ammo is limited in this game. Uh, excuse me. So R1, as you can see here, will ready up your weapon. I don't know if you can see it too well. And you turn with the control, control stick, excuse me. And then when it's up, uh, I'm not even gonna hit a button yet though because I don't wanna waste what ammo we currently have. X is your action button. That's how you pick stuff up and go through doors. So like I said, this is being played on the PS4, the remastered version. I don't know how different it is from the original Resident Evil. Hey there, Mr. Zombie! How are you today? Uh, check the corpse. Pick up his, uh, video thingy, and run. We don't really want to fight these guys yet. We don't have any healing items or any extra ammo, so we're not going to waste it on one stupid zombie that we can run around. So like I said, this game is a lot more focused on puzzle solving than actually killing enemies. This is why. Let me take care of it. Lies, Barry. Lies. What the hell is this thing? I found Kenneth killed by this thing. Let's report this to Wesker. Let's just say that Barry's whole taking three bullets to kill that thing is a bit inaccurate. And I'll be discussing that much later in the game. I mean, I got the Platinum Trophy for this game, so I think I know it pretty well by now. 
Because that included beating the game in under three hours and beating it without saving yes, and stuff like that. Jill, help me look for it. Let's not leave this hall. Good idea. Ah, uh, don't leave this hall. Well, let's look for him. Uh, we're actually not going to find him. So we're just going to walk up to this landing and we're going to see... Oh, yeah, never mind. I was going to say... No, wait, that door's not even locked. What the heck am I saying? Barry. Any luck, Jill? No, nothing. What's going on around here? I can't figure it out. Same here. Chris and now Wesker. There's not much we can do. We can search for him separately. I'll investigate the dining room. Okay, then. I'll try the door on the other side. <sighs> this mansion is gigantic. We could easily get lost. Let's start from the first floor. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. It's a lock, baby. You'd make better use of it. You got the lock pick. Excellent. That is... Nice. Oh. I may need it. Listen. If something happens, let's meet up in this hall. Got it? Okay. That is one reason that uh, Jill is easier to play as, because the lockpick is actually very, very useful. Okay, yeah, it is R1. I just wanted to actually go ahead and test that. Okay. And then, as you can see here, we can now look at the map. It's R2. Okay, for some reason I was thinking it was L2 there. Uh, when you go to your map, if an area is green, that means it's completed. That means that you found all the items in it. You don't need to kill all the enemies or anything. Blue uh, lines represent uh, doors that you can go through. The grayish ones are doors that you have not yet gone through. Red ones are doors that are impassable. Uh, this was an early generation survival horror, so the controls maybe aren't the greatest thing in the world. Okay, we're going to come in here, and since I'm not going for, like, a speedrun or anything on this, I am going to be collecting a lot of the items. I'm also going for the best possible ending, so, yeah, this isn't, like, a speedrun or anything. Oh, no, Jill. No. Bad Jill. Bad. I'm going to push this over, so I'm going to be trying to collect a lot of the items just to show you guys where a lot of the stuff is. Because there are quite a few items that are not necessary to get the crappier endings in the game. Because there are like there are like four different endings for each character, so yeah. Uh, we'll take the map, and this will actually show us the entire rest of the floor. So yeah, lots of good stuff. And as we can see, this room is not yet complete. I wonder why. Oh, no Jill. So yeah, uh, controls can be a bit tricky at times. Uh, this is actually going to come into play if you've completed the game a couple times and have unlocked a specific item. Be dealing with that probably in the next video. Here we have a dagger. Daggers are a defensive item. So using defensive items such as daggers will allow you to escape being grabbed by an enemy as long as they attack you from the front. Uh, I think? Let me check and see if these are even... Okay, yeah, they're definitely equipped, but yeah, I'd assume that I don't need to hit it. What? What is that? Uh. Hey, it's a zombie! What do you know? Hello, Mr. Zombie. Hey, what's up? Uh, let's go ahead and... That's basically all that that's even there for, is just to show you how the daggers work, so... Honestly, that's the only reason that's kind of even there. An emblem of a sword is carved into the lock. Well, that means that there is nothing that we can do here, and I don't know why I hit that. Okay, so we're done here for now, which means we need to head back the other way. See, I know this game much better than I ever knew Silent Hill, even though I don't know if I know it quite as well as like Resident Evil 4, but either way. Uh, let's go ahead and head back through here. Uh, that clock's going to come into play later, so lots of stuff we're going to see much later in the game. 
the game world in this is freaking huge, though. I will admit that. The game world is actually very, very big. Is there a zombie down there? Yeah, okay, so let's avoid him. It may take me a little while to get back used to the controls again, because it has been a while since I've played the game and Platinum did. It was about ten Platinums ago, which was back in, like, February or... No, maybe March. I don't remember, but it's been a little while, so... I still remember a lot of the layout of the game and the items, but I don't necessarily remember that part of it. Okay, so we've got a handgun magazine here. Let's take it. Circle, that's it. Okay, so L1 and circle to reload. Over here we have the trademark green herbs. There are no yellow herbs in this game, so sorry, uh, yellow herb fans. There are none of them. But yeah, as you can see, I have very limited inventory in this game. Even compared to Resident Evil 4, you have very limited inventory space. I mean, ammunition can stack on top of itself quite extensively, but it's still quite a limit, actually, on the amount of supplies you can have. You're going to want to avoid going through this hallway a lot, because if you go through here too many times, you're going to end up... Well, you're going to end up waking up some of these guys anyway, so... Uh, the only door we can go through is straight ahead, but one of those other doors we can lockpick... Uh, I don't think there's actually anything we can do here yet. I think what we actually have to do is grab an item so we can go outside. Yeah, okay, we can't do anything in here yet. That's actually not going to come into play until quite a bit later, when I think about it. Oh, hey, zombies. Uh, that was not too good. But what you want to try to do most of the time is just try to run around them. You can do it fairly often, but not always. Ah, crap. Yep, inventory's already being a problem. This is gonna be fun, isn't it, guys? Uh, you can combine three green herbs to get a full healing item. I usually don't do that, though, and you'll see why later on, but yeah. Uh, we'll take the golden arrow and this handgun magazine. I was thinking there's a door to... Oh, I forgot about him, actually. Crap, I completely forgot about him. If you get grabbed, hit the control sticks uh, up and down as fast as possible to escape being grabbed. Okay, we unlocked it. That's actually a good thing, because that door would have been locked otherwise. Okay, so we're actually injured here, and that's probably not that good of a thing. Can't go through this door. Or actually, yeah, I didn't think we could go through that. Oh. Ah, crap. We got a zombie... Uh, you're going to move a little bit slower if you're injured, and I just got to be careful because there are not a whole lot of healing items in this game compared to the later Resident Evils, not to mention there are... I mean, there's limited everything in this game. That's something that's very different about it, is that there's very limited overall supplies compared to, say, Resident Evil 4. Wow, that zombie's very stupid. Okay, so this is not actually a necessary thing to do, but I'm going to do it anyway just because I can. And, actually, let's go ahead and examine this. Uh, golden arrow, if you examine it, you pull the arrowhead off. And that's going to come into play in just a few moments. I'm not going to pick up the blue diamond that that thing dropped just yet. We don't really need it. Okay, uh, let's see. None of these other doors are currently open. Uh, I know we can't go through the bottom one. I don't think we can go through either of the ones on the right either. But we can go through this one. Excellent. Yeah, this first video is probably going to be stretching that 25 minutes mm -hmm. that I usually limit the videos to. Well, I mean, I can't really do much longer because my camera doesn't let me. It'll only record for 25 minutes. Uh, there is a guy over there, but, and there's shotgun ammo over there, so we're going to need to kill him later on, but I'm not really confident in doing so at this exact moment. Instead, use the arrowhead and run down the stairs once it finally lets you, and we don't get eaten by the zombie behind us. Excellent. What are we going to find down in the dark, creepy tomb area? A bunch of statues, those are going to come into play later on. This thing, which, when I was first playing through this game, I was terrified that taking this book out was going to make that thing, like, fall on me. 
That would just be like a total Resident Evil move or just survival horror move. Just a trap like that, like the freaking fridge of death that killed me in Silent Hill. The one death I got. Book of Curses. It's titled Book of Curses. If we look at the back though, there's a key! Mansion key. And we're going to open up the Book of Curses and read it. Book of Curses. Four masks. Uh, various masks. In all honesty, you're not necessarily going to need a guide to figure out some of these puzzles, but you don't really even need to read all that much stuff. You can kind of figure out a lot of it on your own. Because the puzzles in this game aren't terrible. The camera angle is... You see, the problem is, I can't see where this guy is. You want to aim for the head. He's dead. Always go for headshots. Headshots are far more deadly. We're going to deal with him later on. We're going to have to come back out here multiple times anyway, so we don't even have the shotgun yet, so there's honestly no point of risking our lives going out there and killing him. Uh, is Barry back yet? We have to talk to him? Apparently not. But we do have the key, but we're running a little short on time here, so I am going to use up one of those precious ink ribbons, and that's something that is not going to be the greatest thing ever about this game, is that the limited saves is going to make it a bit tougher to record at times. But I will be able to manage, because really, you don't need to save that often in this game, so... That's my completed files as Chris and as Jill. So we're going to save down here on 6, 7, and 8 for this Let's Play. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this first part of Resident Evil HD Remastered, and I will see you guys next time for part 2.